My growing journey has been tremendous. I have learned about diseases, infestation, proper soil mixes, pH balance, sun rotation, uh, crop uh, rotation. It's just been an, a tremendous lesson. And the journey continues. By the time I leave for Africa, I will know how to properly prepare this land, the soil, irrigation, and to have a harvest that's going to be bountiful for all who come. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. watching this yard is very amazing to me I'm looking at everything around me the birds the bees all the different variety of weeds that we have in this yard I know some are beneficial but I have no idea what I'm looking at I'm sticking things in the ground with no rhyme or reason but I'm just doing it because it's just what else do you do with it time for me to take some action and do something about my knowledge. I'm going to take farming classes. It doesn't have to be like this. There are many types of things, but you will need something to protect against the crop. I'm one of those type of growers. I just put too much work into what I do to have it eaten up. Yeah. I want to feed them. That's one thing. Yeah, we can go How tall is it? Huh? Uh, it's about eight feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there a minimum that, that you... Uh, well, it depends. I mean, you could do a six foot fence. I mean, sometimes, sometime, but if you did, did sometimes, if, if, they're, if they're being changed, there's something flowers, some flowers, and zinnias, and cockroaches, and stuff like that. So, I think you can allow this to hurt the flowers. This is a little garden bed over here. We're going to make one of these today. Yeah. Squash, you know, summer squash is in there, kale, peppers, peppers mm -hmm. and uh, and basically, you know, we had the equipment and the know how to really kind of, you know, do stuff here. So, good land, it's flat, the soils are nice, and so it's really kind of no shade. Yeah, no shade. Yeah, yeah. so. It's such a big push now. Everybody's, you know, when you go in the store, sometimes it's hard to even find a, a well, the, the, the term seedless watermelon yeah. is a misnomer mm. because it has seeds, but the seeds have just not developed. If you look, cut mm -hmm. it open, you'll mm -hmm. see these little tiny white things, but it does have seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no fruits without, well, without a seed or don't have Right in your backyard. Oh, wow. Uh, so right in your backyard. But you have to have, you have to have a bed. You have to have a bed. <laughs> Um, and, it's, and sometimes it's good to, to germinate the right seeds already and let the seedlings grow up this tall before you put them in the bed. But the, the most important thing about doing the rice is that rice, um, well, sorry, like certain crops, but this rice, they don't tolerate any kind of weeds. And once you let, if you let the weeds just proliferate in the bed with the rice, early on, you won't be able to tell the weed from the rice. Uh... So what you do is you put your, make your bed, and we do it differently here. We make your bed. And um, if you were to do this in your backyard, you make your bed, uh, germinate your rice seedlings, and then you put your rice seedling, maybe space, space them maybe like eight inches apart in a hexagonal kind of fashion like that. And then you want to come back and put some straw or mulch to keep the weeds down. You want to keep the weeds down. If you get it in late and it gets cold, you might not get much of a harvest. So you really got to get this in the ground and up and growing. So this has probably been in for the past like four or five weeks. Probably. How tall will it get? Uh, probably just about this tall. And um, I, I can tell you this, is that I, is the rice that we've grown here, and especially the rice we've grown at the farm, is the best rice I've ever tasted. So you mm. can tell the difference? It's addictively. So rice aroni ain't got nothing on this. No, 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 right, 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 right. So, no. so I mean. Well, what type, what type of rice? 
Uh, this is maybe Kasha Kahari. There's a rice called, variety called Sierra Presidio. You know, a lot of rice varieties that they grow over in California. And some is. Well, what what category is it? White? Uh, well, all all rice is brown rice until they mess it up mm -hmm. and okay. polish and polish it and make it white. When you put them under when you put them under that plastic, the heat the heat from the keep the soil because this is a tropical crop. It doesn't like cool soil at all. So the hotter it is, sometimes the better it is. It grows. So once you get the heat up and uh, and the heat up and you know it, it just grows and it just spreads. And um, and then you got the pollen. You know the basil here is the pollen. Ah, that's a lot of watermelons. And I don't know if you know or not, but you know all these beautiful flowers. Some of the flowers are male and some of the flowers are female. So the bees have to go to the male male flower, take the pollen off, and they have to go to the female flower and put the pollen on the female flower and the female flowers are the only ones that will produce the fruit. Okay. And that, and that's, that squash. Well, that's most with squash. All those plants oh, in the same yes. family. I only got one big old squash, but yeah. I think about, it was all I male. I 14. Yeah, it was all mm -hmm. male. It's a really light one, kind of almost like this almost. It's a real mm -hmm. light cloth like this, mm -hmm. which will let the sunlight in, it'll let the water in, but it'll keep the insects out. Okay. Because the thicker that is, the less sunlight that it's gonna allow for the plant. So it, a lot of light will not be able to get to the plant. So that's why you can use that in the, in them, in the wintertime when they're dead. You know, there are a few ways to make raised beds. And the reason why you make raised beds, I like raised beds, so sometimes you buy the lumber. I use it when I make my raised beds, I buy lumber from Home Depot. But I buy the treated lumber. The treated lumber now is different from the treated lumber 30 years ago, which is treated with arsenic. Just so you know, ladies, so you don't think I'm being lazy here. Yeah, I did have back surgery a couple of years ago. So <laughs> I can't do heavy lifting probably for about another year. So. Oh, oh, what y'all think? Like? No, we're, we're not thinking. There's just so many more products available now. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like people getting rich off of like creating yeah. these things. Yeah, so um, then it's a matter of just doing it very lightly and gently, mm -hmm. pushing it out. And I'm not worried about it. I see a little bit of that. It's about two inches? Yeah, it's about two inches. And, and that's enough? Yeah. That's uh -huh. deep enough? Well, it's deep enough too because remember, the soil right here is rather loose. Okay. So those plant roots are going to go right through there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and because these grasses that were there, they had, they, had a, they had a root system going down in the soil. So mm -hmm. it's, it's made the soil kind of porous down there already. Okay. Yeah. So what I, use, I do sometimes, and I want to keep this as, you know, you can buy some seeds and you get a whole bag of seeds and maybe only 30% of them germinate, which is bad. Mm -hmm. The period right here is that if, if, they, if your seeds don't germinate, if you, especially if you've done the right, you know, the biggest problem that many people get will make with starting seeds out, starting seed or making a seedling or planting a seed in the garden, they plant it too deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's oh, a lot of things people okay. do, even when they start seedlings out of the trays. Plant the seeds? Uh -huh. So you plant these seeds? Yeah, only three inches. I mean, I mean, I mean, or three X, or three on top of each other. Three on top of each other, uh -huh. and that's the, the death. Death. Okay, if you had a watermelon seed or something like that, which is a little bigger, but if you lay them flat on the top of each other, mm -hmm. you don't plant it any deeper than that. So that's the rule. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Like this, where it's only two inches of the biochar. Oh, it's literally just kind of sitting in the You just sit, I mean, you just sit, you don't have to cover that seed that deep. Just drop it in, and actually, the rain, when the rain comes, it will splash enough soil on it, but don't plant it too deep. If you plant this at least two inches deep or inch deep, you're not going to get. You'll be waiting, uh -huh. and you'll wonder. You'll wonder why. When you dig, how to do it, what to grow, how to prepare your beds, how to start your seedlings up, how to do all those things. But excellent resource. Okay. Excellent resource. Are you on Facebook? Oh yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. I I have been there and back. It's a lot. It's a lot. But um, this, that dress. I'm going to make me some tea with this. With coconut. Thank you for watching. This is your girl, Empress.